This is one of a series of short videos produced by the IASP for the Global Year Against Musculoskeletal Pain, which is designed to inform and help people living with chronic pain. Nearly everyone will experience pain at some point in their life. In fact, at any one time, around one in five people experience chronic, long-lasting pain. The most common form of chronic pain involves the musculoskeletal system, the part of the body that includes bones, joints, muscles, and ligaments. Pain is a huge problem and affects every portion of a person's life. Complete relief of pain is rare, and people are constantly looking for a better treatment. However, there are some common beliefs, myths, or misconceptions about chronic pain that may not be helpful. We will highlight several of these. The first belief is that my pain is always a sign that I have an injury that must be fixed for me to get better. This belief is partly true. After an acute injury, your pain is directly related to your injury. For example, if you sprain your ankle, it will need time to heal, generally six to eight weeks, and then your pain will go away. So for acute pain, it is true that pain is signaling that you have an injury that needs fixing or healing. However, for chronic pain, the belief that pain is signaling a problem that needs fixing is often false. In many conditions, pain is present even though there is nothing that can or should be fixed. We now know that chronic pain is linked to changes in the nerves, spinal cord, and brain that mean that the strength of pain signals is not necessarily directly related to the amount of damage or injury. This is because these changes in our nervous system amplify the pain signals and cause us to feel pain even though there is no ongoing damage. The second belief is that if I exercise as instructed by my physician or physical therapist, the pain will get worse and make my condition worse. This belief is false. In most acute conditions after an injury, an exercise program and remaining active are critical to a fast and full recovery. Your physician and physical therapist should be consulted for an appropriate exercise program. In chronic conditions, exercise is one of the most effective treatments. While some people may feel an increase in pain after initially starting an exercise program, if you continue with that program, there will be a reduction in pain and an improvement in your functional ability. Once pain is chronic, the initial problem is healed or stabilized, and you will not harm yourself by participating in an exercise program. The third belief is that the doctor has referred me to a psychologist because they think my pain is all in my head and not real. This belief is also false all pain is real. But ongoing pain is almost always associated with changes in the way that you think and feel. A psychologist has a special set of skills that can help to identify these changes and help reverse them. Dealing with these changes and giving you new ways to approach and manage your pain will help you better cope with and control your pain. They will teach you ways in which you can reduce your pain, such as specific relaxation techniques, and ways to help you get back to doing things you enjoy, such as getting back into social and recreational activities and work. Research shows that the addition of psychological management to an exercise program or to your routine care can produce reductions in pain and improve your function. The fourth belief is that as people get older, they get more aches and pains and should just learn to deal with this better. This belief is false too. People across the lifespan experience a similar amount of chronic pain. Around 20% of people of every age experience pain. Some conditions, like osteoarthritis, are more frequent in the older adult. However, conditions like migraine or temporal mandibular disorder are more common in younger adults and tend to decrease with age. The fifth belief is that women have more pain and a lower pain tolerance than men. This belief is false. While some chronic muscle pain conditions are more common in women, like fibromyalgia and temporomandibular joint disorder, 
Other conditions, like low back pain or myofascial pain, show a similar pattern between men and women. And still others are more common in men than in women. It will be important to determine the factors that contribute to these differences in the different pain conditions. The sixth belief is that reducing my weight will have no effect on my pain, as I have been overweight for a long time, even before I had the pain. This is definitely false. The increased weight puts extra stress on your joints, particularly in your lower back and legs. It also requires a greater amount of energy to perform a similar task than with lower weight and may contribute to fatigue and pain. Research shows that reducing weight reduces these stresses on the joint and body and can reduce your pain. In summary, the experience of pain is influenced by many factors. A pain professional can help you better understand and manage your pain.